This video is in response to questions asked by Abomi on his channel. Uh, he asked a couple different questions. I'll address the first question first, of course. There's another question which I'll address at the end of the video. But his first question was, do you carry, and if so, how? I uh, do carry. I carry every day. I've carried a lot of different guns in a lot of different ways over the last several years, trying to find out what works best for me. Uh, I've got it narrowed down pretty much nowadays, but still haven't perfected it yet. Even after several years of carry, I always find a better way of it sooner or later. Uh, I do carry every day, all day. When I get up in the morning, I put it on. When I get dressed, I take it off when I go to bed at night. Uh, when I take it off, it gets locked in a safe. I do have kid, uh, kids in the house, so the guns have to be locked away when they're not on my person. Just for safety's sake. Uh, I do, like I said, I do carry all day. I don't carry all day because I'm afraid something's going to happen to me in my house. I just do that because I'm a little scatterbrained, absent-minded. If I took my gun off every time I came in the door and had to put it back on every time I went out, probably 60-70% of the time I'd be leaving the house with no firearm. Which would be safe, probably. Uh, chances of needing it are pretty slim. But uh, always of the mindset that I would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Uh, plus there are some areas in our area where I would not go unarmed. We have a couple of big malls that we go to regularly that uh, have a little bit of a gang problem over in downtown Portland. Uh, but most of the areas I go are pretty safe. I stay over here in the suburbs. But still, I do carry. carry every day. And uh, in this video we'll discuss what I carry, how I carry it, and then at the end we'll answer another question. So let's get moving. A major focus of this video is going to be how I carry. We've already established that I do carry, so now we'll discuss how. Uh, I always conceal carry. I never open carry. Uh, I'm not morally opposed to open carry. I've seen people around here do it. It doesn't bother me. I have open carried in some situations myself, like hiking or camping. Uh, I just would not do it in everyday life. Uh, I feel, I don't like I said, I don't have a moral objection to it, but I do have a tactical objection to it. I think that an advantage is only advantage if you don't give your enemy uh, the op uh, ample opportunity to counter that advantage. And so why would I give away the greatest advantage I would have during a possible confrontation and that would be that I'm armed. Uh, I just feel that's not a smart thing to do so I don't open carry. I'd like to keep my advantages secret, let people not know what I'm doing. I do carry uh, multiple different item guns. Uh, I'm not one of these people that thinks you could have one gun for every possible scenario. I just don't think they make such a gun. So I think you need different guns for different times. You, I don't dress around my gun. I, pro I produce a gun to fit the way I'm dressed. I feel when you start dressing around your weapon, you start to become obvious. So I try not to be obvious. I'm not so concerned about being made. Uh, not like when I first started carrying. When I first started carrying, I was very concerned about bumps and printing. And Nowadays, I'm just like... People don't pay any attention. Uh, we were at a local restaurant, Pig and Pancake, the other day, and I had come back from the bathroom, and my uh, cover garment had pulled up over my gun. So I was basically open carrying for like an hour in a restaurant. Uh, not a single person noticed, not even the five other people I was with. Uh, only I noticed when I started to get up that my shirt had been tucked under my gun. No one else ever said a thing, noticed, or even made contact, eye contact with the gun that I could notice. So people just don't pay attention to you. But like I say, I've tried different methods. I've tried shoulder holsters. I've tried inside the waistband, outside the waistband, uh, packs, everything. I'll discuss as much of that as I can here, address as much of the issues with each that I can, uh, address which guns I carry, and uh, we'll get on to it. Okay, uh, let's deal with one carry method that I first started with. I first started carrying, I always carried outside of waistband or OWB. I carried with multiple different types of holsters. Uh, carried with holsters with thumb brakes. Carried just regular like little Donium belt slide holsters. Carried big paddle holsters with the thumb lock. This is good for big heavy guns. Keeps them concealed. They don't fall out if you bend over or anything like that. Uh, one of the biggest issues I found when I first started carrying was carrying holsters that were a little too loose and then when you'd have to jog or run, they'd kind of want to bounce out of the holster. Uh, 
but outside waistband has its advantages. It's much more comfortable uh, to, for just standing and walking around because it's not held tight against your body by your belt like it is when it's inside waistband. Uh, it can be more cumbersome. It's easier to hit it on things. Uh, it gets in the way when you sit down and try to put your seatbelt on. Uh, it just it sticks out a little further, so it's a little harder to conceal. You can carry some pretty big guns that way. Uh, and if you're in a situation where you're not worried too much about concealment, I'll still carry outside waistband if I've got the right clothes on. Uh, just like in the winter time, when I'm going to have like a heavy jacket or a hoodie or something that I'm not going to take off, I'll still carry outside waistband sometimes just for the comfort of it. Uh, but I primarily have gone to inside waistband for carry. Outside waistband is great, but uh, it's usually not what I go for now. Uh, like I say, and I worked my way from that, everything from small guns like revolvers, car K40 here, uh, smaller officer's model 1911, SIG P229. This is my big boy for outside waistband carry. This gun is thick and heavy. I've done videos on this gun before. Uh, makes a gun like this pretty comfortable to carry. Uh, and like I say, it conceals pretty well under a hoodie or something. You're, you're going to see a bulge there, but... Uh, no one's going to know what it is. Pretty bulgy clothes in the winter anyway, so no one's going to pay any attention whatsoever. So, I like the outside waistband for some of these big guns. They are more comfortable. Not doesn't feel secure to me. I mean, it is as secure, but you really need a strong belt when you're outside waistband carrying because all the weight is on the outside of the belt, so it will sag, it will droop, you know, so you really have to have it good and tight, have a good solid belt for outside waistband carry. Inside waistband carry, that's not such an issue. But outside the waistband carry, you need a solid belt, especially if you're going to carry a big heavy gun like this one. Now we'll discuss my preferred method of carry, and that is inside the waistband, uh, IWB. Uh, to me, this is just the best way to carry for your everyday life. It just has a lot of conveniences to it. It holds the gun tighter to your body, holds it more securely, it's easier to conceal, it doesn't get in the way as much as outside waistband holster does, it doesn't print as badly as an outside the waistband holster does. Uh, it allows you to carry a pretty big gun or a pretty small gun, however you want. Smaller gun, of course, is going to be more comfortable. Uh, I do carry some pretty small ones this way. I like thin guns this way, like the, the car MK40 here, which you've all seen before. Uh, very comfortable to carry inside the waistband. Uh, but you can carry some pretty big guns, too. I mean, like I carry this one. This is my SIG P220 Elite Carry, stainless. This is not a small gun by any means, definitely not a light gun, but inside the waistband with a good holster and a good uh, belt really holds it securely. Makes it nice and comfortable to carry. I, I would even say comfortable. Uh, it's not going to be as comfortable as carrying in the car, of course, but still pretty comfortable to carry. Uh, I also like to carry revolvers inside the waistband. They're a little thicker at the cylinder, but they tend to be easy, more comfortable to carry because they're so narrow at the bottom, so you have less poking in the hip. Uh, and they're smaller at the top, so you don't have as much printing. But they are a little thicker in the cylinder, especially this is a Colt, so it's a six shot, so it's a little thicker than, say, uh, than, say my Smith & Wesson here, which is a five shot, so it's a little narrower. Uh, also, one of, my, one of my favorite carry guns lately has been my uh, SIG. We'll go into why in another uh, section of the video, but... This is a nice, moderately sized, this is the subcompact, double action only. I like double action. Uh, good gun for carrying. A good thing about this gun, if you're one of those people that's touchy about dings and scratches like I am, everything on this gun's modular. I can replace everything. Grip and, for, and a slide. I can replace this whole frame. I mean, for $45, I can buy a new one. The actual receiver is the, a little section inside that actually comes out of the grip frame. So you can replace the grip frame for $45 if it gets scratched or banged, you drop it and damage the grip or something. Replace it, look like new again. I really, really like that idea. Uh, that's really made for OCD people like me. Uh, inside, of the, Back to inside the waistband carry here, uh, you can carry some pretty small guns that way too. I've got some holsters that even let me carry like my little sea camp that way. This is great for dressing up because this gun's tiny, little inside the waistband holster. If you're like in jeans and a dress shirt, that level of dress, this is perfect. You can just put it right on your, like a three o'clock, at a, I carry this at about 2.30 when I carry this dress at a 2.30 position. Very easy to carry. 
But inside waistband is my preferred method. You can carry multiple different types of guns this way, multiple sizes. It just seems to be the most stable method to carry. It's not the easiest method to carry. There are methods I like to use that are easier, but they're a little lazier and a little more obvious. So we'll get into those a little later. Now we'll discuss pocket carry. Pocket carry is not something I like to do. Uh, just don't like the idea of putting a gun in my pocket. But uh, it's something I occasionally do. Uh, if I'm dressed in a way that it just precludes wearing a holster or I'm going to be doing something that I don't want to have a holster on, like if we're going somewhere where I know I'm going to be hugged repeatedly uh, by friends or family, I tend to not want to have a big holster on my waist that's noticeable to everyone. Uh, a lot of those times I'll just slip my little C-Camp 380. It goes right in a little pocket wallet holster. goes in your back pocket. looks like a wallet. No one would ever know it was there. When you reach in, you slide your fingers behind the holster, hook that with your thumb, pulls right out of your hand into a very natural position. Very nice, easy, comfortable way to carry a gun. Uh, I also have this holster for my roar ball, which is meant for a front pocket. Uh, I almost never carry it in the front pocket. I always put it in a back pocket, a little tiny 9mm ready to go with you. Pocket carry is a preferred method for a lot of people, they'll carry their Smith & Wesson J-frames, they'll carry guns this size in a pocket holster. I just, there's no way, they're too heavy to me. Uh, just couldn't handle that weight in my front pocket. Uh, in the back pocket, it's a little more manageable, but uh, these are lightweight guns and they're pushing it for me. Just kind of a pansy when it comes to pocket carry. Some people do it all the time. It is a very uh, pretty safe method. I don't like having a gun where I'm going to put in my hands, but uh, as you can see, the little holsters have these little flaps and stuff that holds them secure so they're not sliding around in your pocket. So when you reach in your pocket, your gun is where it's supposed to be. So. That's one method of carry, and I do use it occasionally, but it is not my preferred method. Let's discuss a method of carry that didn't work out as well for me as I thought it would. Uh, just wasn't comfortable enough for me, and that is shoulder carry. Now, a lot of people will use these shoulder holsters. They're nice in some ways. They go under a jacket. If you're dressing like in a suit jacket every day, they're a good idea. If I don't do that, so they didn't really work out for me. The, they're a little harder to access under like a hoodie or something because you got to reach all the way up to your sh under your shoulder blades to get. I mean, under your armpit to get it. Uh, so it didn't work out for me. Uh, <clears throat> I do keep it. They're nice. You know, they hold the hold the gun. They have a place if, for either a different magazine, for an extra magazine, or for reloaders. I always add a little clip on one side to stabilize them. But uh, just didn't work out for me. I do keep this one around. This one is for my uh, Walther PPK. I keep it around for one reason, and that's Halloween. If you dress as James Bond, you have to have your PPK in a, in a shoulder holster. So I still keep it around. Serves a purpose for me. Works out for a lot of people. Doesn't work, Shoulder holster carry does, just doesn't work for me as a method. Gave me a headache a lot, too. I noticed a lot of shoulder strain, neck strain when I carried this way. So just not a great method for me. Now here's a method of carry that tends to be a bit controversial with some people. Uh, I use it quite often. Uh, it's a waist pack carry. I carry this a lot at the gym or if I'm dressed for the gym. Uh, if I'm going to the gym, like today's Sunday, this is what I had on while I was doing the video. Uh, if I'm going to the gym today, a lot of times in the morning when I get up, I'll just go ahead and dress for the gym because I've got nothing else to do until I do it. Wearing a pair of uh, Gym shorts and a t-shirt makes it a little hard to carry a holster, so I'll slap my waist pack on. I mean, it's very practical for the gym. It's got a front pouch here where you can keep your cell phone while you're at the gym. It's got a front pack here where you put your keys. As you can see, I've got my iPod in there. I keep all the stuff I need for the gym in there. Uh, I used to keep my ID in there until we went to fingerprint system. Don't need it anymore. Uh, the thing about this, it looks just like a regular fanny pack. It's got the pouch and everything, but it does have... A zip away and this has a quick pull here for when you need to access it quickly you pull that away and there's your gun inside and a holster in the back the holsters held very securely it's all velcro this I keep my car PM 40 this gun right now is not safety checked. this gun is loaded so I'm being very careful with this because I just took this off my waist so loaded gun but that's what I carry a lot a lot of people have a problem with this method of carry they uh, think that it's unmanly. <laughs> I uh, can't address those issues because if your manhood is defined by whether you wear a waist pack or not when you're going to the gym, I, that's a problem I can't help you with here during a video this short. Uh, I have no problem with it. 
never been called on it. And a lot of people also think that it's very obvious that if you're carrying a, a waste pack that people know you have a gun. Uh, if that's true, then we have a lot of people carrying guns here in Portland. We have a lot of tourists, so we have a lot of people carrying guns. Also, uh, carrying a fanny pack when you're in gym clothes just looks normal. You don't have pockets, so you need a place for your wallet. You need everything like that. So to me, it doesn't look out of place at all. Uh, this is not the one I use for hiking. I also use a similar system for hiking. We will go over that. Okay, another method of carry we're going to talk about here is when hiking. Uh, if we're hiking somewhere really remote, I'll open carry. Uh, if we're not hiking somewhere remote, city parks, state parks, where we're liable to run into people, but they're still liable to be big critters or worst two-legged predators, I uh, carry in this type of pack. It's bigger than my other pack. It's got more room for other things to carry in it, like uh, binoculars or anything, little small pair of binoculars, uh, record video recorders, things like that. It's got bigger pouches. It's just a bigger pack. Uh, so I use this one, but uh, also has a water bottle attachments that go right here that I carry with it also, so I can carry a couple of water bottles with it. But uh, it is also, as you can see, the same style holster that the other is in this. I carry my Glock 29 SF. Want something with a lot of power when I'm out in the woods. Uh, we do have some big critters around here, so 10 millimeter is nice. Uh, and with this gun, you get you know 10 rounds in the magazine, one round in the chamber of 10 millimeter. 11 rounds of 10 millimeter is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, plus, it'll more than deal with any two-legged issues that may present themselves. Uh, and you got to remember. Out in places like uh, camping areas, hiking trails, uh, there are a large number of people out there that could be do you harm. Uh, it is a very nice place for them to be where they aren't subjected to constant scrutiny, so good place to be if you're a criminal. Uh, just look at all the stories of people that have been assaulted while camping or hiking. Uh, this is a little dirty right now. The cat's been using it as a pillow up in the office because it is winter, so we haven't been hiking much. But this is a great method when you're hiking. Uh, if you're hiking and don't want to give away your advantage that you're armed, you know, you're in an area where there's going to be more people, you don't want to either want to freak them out and you don't want to alert uh, possible predators of the two-legged variety that you're armed, this is a great way to carry. Just with the water bottles on it, it just looks like you're carrying any other hiking pack. But the holster is in the back, again, hidden in a different compartment. Very easy to get to. It's got one another one of these quick release straps. If you want to get to it instantly, you just pull and it unzips the hat. You just pull it out. Uh, but another great carry method here that I use uh, every now and then. Okay, to sum up here, a couple of things I will cover are uh, just a few other of the less physical aspects of carrying. Uh, somewhat physical, but not as comfort-wise. Uh, and that's going to be platform, printing, and feeling safe. Uh, as you can know, like I said, I'm someone who believes in multiple tools for multiple jobs. Uh, my background educationally is in psychology and uh, education, but I consider myself more of a craftsman. Uh, people who watch my videos know I love, consider myself an amateur gunsmith, a little bit of a woodworker, so I like to be handy, so I like to have different tools. I don't have one set of tools for every job. I have a different tool for, for every different job. I feel the same way about my guns. Uh, so, but one thing I do try to do is stay in the same type of a platform, same type of fi uh, method of fire. If you notice, these guns are all very different, but they all have one thing in common. They're all pull the gun, pull the trigger. That's all you do. The car, very uh, nice, smooth revolver like, uh, almost like a double act, light double action trigger. Uh, revolvers, of course, double action triggers. Sig P250, a great double action only trigger. It's like firing a revolver. Uh, the SIG P229, just pull it out, pull the trigger, double action revolver. You also have a single action on follow-ups on this, but first, give the first uh, shot is pull the gun, pull the trigger, works every time, kind of a, kind of a deal. Uh, don't like to get into safeties. Uh, you did see that I have shown during this video uh, some 1911s. I used to carry 1911s. I have quit carrying 1911s because it's not the same platform as these. And I'll discuss that a little bit when I get into what you feel safe with. But uh, moving on to printing, as you can see, these are all different types of guns. Uh, printing is something that first-time carriers are super concerned with, like I spoke about earlier in the video. Uh, as you tend to carry a little longer, you tend to be concerned less and less about that. You start to realize there's a big difference between printing and brandishing. 
Uh, if you just got a little bump in your jacket, most people are not going to notice it. 99.99% of people are just going to go about their day and pay very little attention to you, if any. Uh, so it's a little bit of a paranoia that seems to come with first time carrying though, that we all have to work our way through. So if you're in that stage now, don't let it discourage you. There's certain stages you just have to go through. The comfort, uh, both emotional and physical comfort that you have to go through, that you have to just learn to deal with. And it really does come to you. It just takes time. Uh, but after a while, you just don't get that concerned about printing. Uh, the other thing is feeling safe. Now, there's two different ways of feeling safe. Your gun should make you feel safe. You should feel like if you get into a bad situation, this is a tool that's going to help you get out of it unharmed. It's going to help you protect your friends, your family, and your own life. Uh, if it's not doing that, if the caliber is too small and you don't feel comfortable, then it's probably not the gun for you. If it's uh, a gun you don't feel comfortable with the manual of arms with, then it's not the right gun for you. You have to feel safe with the gun. Uh, there are, I'm a person who I feel comfortable with anything 380 and above. Some people wouldn't carry anything less than a 40. Some people wouldn't carry anything less than a 9. Some people will carry a 45 or a 10 millimeter and that's all they feel safe with. It's all personal preference. Uh, I often carry that Walther PPK you saw. Not the biggest caliber in the world, but that gun is so accurate and I shoot it so well, you know, that I can hit tiny targets at 30 yards with it with very little effort. So if I can place a shot that well with it, it's going to serve me really well, so I feel very comfortable with it. It's mostly about shot placement. Uh, so just feel comfortable with your gun. Feel safe with your gun. Don't let anyone else tell you what gun is right for you. Always decide that for yourself. I tend to prefer revolvers, but I've moved to semi-autos a little bit because of them being thinner. But I've actually found that even though they're thinner, the revolvers, like I said earlier, are more comfortable because they're thinner at the bottom and the top, so they don't poke you in the love handles or in the thigh as much as some of the semi-autos do. Uh, once again, that'll be your own personal preference also. The other aspect of feeling safe is, do you feel safe whole handling the gun? Is it something that you trust yourself with? If you don't trust yourself with a gun that has a light single action trigger, like a 1911 here, you know, if you don't trust yourself with that, you know, you, you, you don't want to carry it. Uh, I quit carrying 1911s because I didn't feel safe with it anymore. Because while I was doing some drills, some fast draw drills, I found myself occasionally pulling the trigger before I released the safety. Because it's not a gun I train with very much. So that made me feel unsafe. Even though it only happened a couple of times, I'm like, well, you know, it only have to happen once for it to cost me my life. So I just don't carry 1911s anymore. It's not that I don't feel 1911s are a safe gun. I'm not safe with a 1911 because I'm not properly trained with one. Uh, that's why I have gone to the double actions. I've grown up with revolvers. I'm more comfortable with revolvers. I'm more comfortable with double action. I actually shoot a double action better. I find that with lighter trigger pulls, I tend to squeeze too hard, shoot right agenda, uh, shoot low and left, uh, just because I'm not used to compensating for that light trigger. I'm used to putting a little more effort into a trigger. So feel safe with what you carry. If you feel safe with a double action, carry a double action. If you feel safe safer with a light trigger, carry a light trigger. Just there's. So like I said, two ways you need to feel safe. You need to feel that your gun can protect you, but you also feel, need to feel that you don't need protecting from your own gun. Uh, so that's the, some of the biggest aspects of concealed carry for me. Uh, I hope this video has been educational, <laughs> if not educational, at least entertaining. And once again, thanks for watching. Uh, this is the Yankee Marshal. Ibomi's second question deals with his uh, Kimber and whether he should carry it or is it too nice to carry. Uh, I carry some pretty nice guns. Uh, as you can see here, there's some guns that are not cheap. Just the Roar Bar alone is over $1,000. Uh, the SIG here, for example, you know, you're talking between $1,300, $1,400 MSRP on these guns. So, not cheap guns. Uh, but I do carry them. Uh, one thing I do do, I compromise, I like the look of a blued gun. A blued gun is the most beautiful gun in the world. But stainless works better for me because I'm a little OCD about scratches, dings, nicks. I can carry this $1,300, $1,400 gun. If it gets a mar on the finish, I can buff it right out. So good compromise there for me. Uh, so my answer would be yes, I probably would carry it. Uh, that's your personal choice. 
but I see you also have other guns there that can do just the same thing if you practice with them. So maybe I wouldn't carry that gun. Uh, I see no problem with having guns that are safe queens. Some guns, all guns are tools. Some guns are tools you use. Some guns are tools you like to look at. Some guns uh, you just appreciate as a piece of art. I have guns I don't shoot. I have guns that I have no desire to shoot. I just like the way they look. I like the way they function. I think they're beautiful. So I buy them. I keep them. I don't carry them. Uh, and I also understand that you consider a gun that's just too expensive to shoot. There are some guns I own that I would never shoot because they're too expensive. I own an old Colt single action army from 1939. Passed down from generation to generation, the thing is worth tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, probably the most valuable item I own, and I would never ever shoot it. It's in still in mint condition in the presentation box. I would never shoot it. It's just too valuable. And if people, some people might look at me like, "Oh, it's a tool, and you're not using it for what it's designed for." But I look at it as a piece of history, a piece of art, so I don't have no problem with not shooting it. So to sum up. It's personal preference. I would carry the gun. The price would not be the biggest issue. I would have issue with marring such a beautiful gun. So I could easily understand if you don't carry that gun. I do think you have other guns that can do just as well. I would probably stick to carrying the ones that do just as well. It's not like it's a special uh, concealment gun. Not like it's made to conceal more easily than other guns. It's a big gun. You're going to have to conceal work to conceal it. You've got other guns that do the same thing and are just as easy to conceal. So why not just carry them?